Hey guys, what's up? Serena Pia here from thriftdiving.com. So what do you do when you have an old kid's bed or a crib? Definitely a crib because no thrift store is gonna take that. But what do you do when you have an old toddler bed and you don't wanna get rid of it, but you can't donate it? I had it all packed up in the back of my trunk. I was ready to get rid of this thing. And then I was like, they're not gonna take this. So anyway, we took off the headboard and the footboard and we're gonna actually turn it this way and make it into a planter. So stick with me because in this video, we're going to paint this a really beautiful poppy color. We're gonna add some cedar boards to the top and maybe even lift it up a little bit. We'll see. Stick with me because I'm gonna show you how to do it. So the height of the potting bench was 22 and a half. That was not tall enough for me. I'm five foot 10, so it needed to be much bigger. And I decided that I was going to make a platform for the potting bench. And I just happened to be lucky and found some two by fours in my garage. So I didn't have to go and buy any wood to create the base of this. I just used my circular saw and cut the pieces about 29 and a quarter inch. So I've cut the four pieces that are going to go on the bottom and this is all that I have left of the two by four. So I think I have about 42 inches. I think I'm just going to cut four 10 inch pieces and that will make up the bottom legs and hopefully it'll raise it up a little bit. So let's just go ahead and mark this off here, 10 inches. So now that we've got three legs cut at 10 inches, we've got one last piece here that we need to trim down to 10 inches. And then we should have four feet, four legs, so that we can make this garden planter a little taller. I also needed two pieces of cedar to create the top of the potting bench, and then one that was going to be stenciled for the top. So I went ahead and cut those as well. All right, so we have four two by fours here. This is gonna be the bottom of the potting bench. And I'm gonna use these spacers and just put them in between because if there's any soil, any water that gets through to the bottom of this potting bench, we wanna make sure it has a way to get through and doesn't get trapped. So I also cut these two boards. These are three quarter inch boards, one by fours. And this is going to actually secure these four uh, two by fours together. And we're gonna use exterior screws in order to adhere these together. But we also have to make sure that we do a pilot hole because we do not want to split any of this wood. Probably should spread that around, but that's okay. We're just gonna stick it on there okay so we're going to go ahead and put the pilot holes into the boards here and then screw in the exterior screws in order to hold this base together all right it is hot as crap out here today it is like 95 degrees and i am sweating okay so anyway we have what looks to be a bottom of the bench. And now we need to, now that we see that it looks good, we can flip it over. It looks pretty even. There's some spots that are not very even, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to add feet because we want to raise this up probably about nine, 10, 11 inches, something like that, so that it's going to be uh, at, the, at a good height. So we can actually use it as a bench, a gardening bench. One of the easiest ways that I like to build furniture or to connect new wood and old wood is by drilling pocket holes. And that's what I did here to connect the feet to the base. Okay, so now that I've got the pocket holes drilled into the two by fours, I can go ahead and put some wood glue on the bottom, spread that out nice and evenly. And then I can use my power drill in order to drill these two, and I think they're two and a quarter inch Craig screws but they're longer, they're the HD screws, so they're made specifically for the two by fours. So once I built the base, I had to figure out how I was gonna connect the bed to the base so that it looked like one unit and it wouldn't tip over. So the easiest way to do that is, again, by drilling pocket holes. The challenge was that this bed had some existing hardware and so some parts were a little 
hollow inside. So when I would drill the pocket holes, I would think that everything was great, but then when I would take the pocket hole jig off, I'd find that it was like hollow and shattered inside. So basically what I did was just try to drill the holes in the spots where the wood was not gonna give way, and then just connect that to the base, screwing it in. And after clamping it down and doing pocket holes on the front legs and realizing, oh no, there are hollow parts inside here, I went ahead and did some pocket holes on the outside on the back legs. And once I plugged it up, you couldn't even tell that there was a pocket hole there. So everything ended up working out in the end, but I did have to drill several holes in order to figure out what was gonna work. We can actually start connecting this piece, which is the toddler bed, to the base that we created. And it's not going to be perfect, but hopefully once it's all painted with the Beyond Paint, we'll be able to make this all one color and look cohesive. So let's go ahead and get our uh, screws, let's connect this baby, and then we're ready to paint. So after driving the pocket hole screw, I put a little bit of wood glue and put a plug in there. Usually this is what you do when you want to conceal your pocket holes. Sand it down, it'll look like it wasn't even there. Now I wanted to put some wood there to cover up all the raw edges from the two by fours. So I went ahead and just cut some pieces, four pieces, and then did some pilot holes, used some exterior screws and just covered up those raw edges. Things were not perfect, so I added a little bit of wood filler and then just used my orbital sander to smooth everything out. Nice and clean, so it's ready for paint. Oh my God, can I tell you how much I freaking love this thing? Guys, I'm telling you, it started out as a toddler bed and now it's going to be a bench for the garden. No, not a bench. What is it, a potting, a potting bench. <laughs> Oh my god, so we are almost done and let me tell you the hard part was trying to figure out how to secure this thing and It's pretty stable. It's a little rocky, but you know what? That's okay It's not gonna tip over because the base is super heavy. So now let's move on to the super fun part Which is painting we're gonna do a bright poppy color with beyond paint and it's gonna look amazing We're gonna do some stenciling up top and we need to make a trip to Ikea because we need some little things to hang here. So let's get started on the painting and then we're just about done. The paint that I used for this project is by Beyond Paint. Now I have used many of their other colors, but I have never used Poppy before and I was so excited to try it. It's like, it's almost an orangey reddish color. So it was just beautiful. It was perfect for this project. And what I like about it is that I don't, I don't have to sand, I don't have to prime. So I could take this raw wood and just start working right out of the container. No sanding, no priming. Just make sure that it's clean first because you want the paint to adhere. So I recommend using a good degreaser, maybe simple green, just make sure that you clean it really well. And you don't have to use a paintbrush. This is a paint that is actually recommended to use a roller. So you see here that I'm just using a roller very easily to apply a coat. And you're gonna wanna do two coats. It has a lot of pigment, but for most furniture paints, uh, you're gonna have to do two coats. So go ahead and put two coats on, use your roller, and it doesn't matter if you're doing wood, if you're painting glass, plastic, masonry, I mean, countertops, all of these, these surfaces can be painted with Beyond Paint. So I like that it just doesn't take a long time. The building part and figuring out how to construct things is usually what takes me a long time. The painting should be the easy part. So go ahead, roll it on, make sure that you put a good coat, good coverage everywhere. If there are spaces that you cannot get to with a roller, you see here that I'm using a brush. I couldn't get in there with a roller. So just take the brush, smush the paint into any crevices that you can't reach, and then let it dry, and then go back and do a nice second even coat. It'll look beautiful. I wanted to do some stenciling too, so I took the bright white, opened up the container, and just dipped my paintbrush in there very easily and stenciled right over top of the cedar board that went on top. Now I've got a personal cutting machine, it cuts vinyl, and I was able to do a really cute, quick stencil that said garden, painted it, peeled it off, and it looked amazing. And don't you love when you find things around your house that you had and you didn't even remember? So I happened to find underneath of my bathroom cabinet this Ikea rail, and I thought it would be perfect to mount underneath of the cedar top board for hanging towels. 
Once the potting bench was dry, I took my cedar boards, drilled some pilot holes, put the screws in. Now remember, always do pilot holes when you're working with cedar because it will split. Now if you remember, there's our little Ikea rail and so it fits nicely under there for holding towels and I just love it. Now put a little bit of glue on the sides and I could actually slide this top right in. I didn't have to do any routing, I just slid it in and it fit perfectly into the bed rail. It was amazing. Okay, so whenever you're doing outdoor furniture, you always want to use a multi-purpose sealer. Beyond Paint makes one. I like it because it goes on very easily. You can use a brush. I only used a brush because I didn't have a roller, but typically it goes on very quickly with a roller. And just put a coat. I probably will go back and do two coats just to make sure it's really durable. And to add the cedar shelf on top, I added a little bit of wood glue to the top. And then I took my nailer and just made sure I was very careful in trying to get those nails perfectly placed. I think we're done. So we are done with this makeover and I have to say, I absolutely love it. What do you think, Kojo? It's terrific. <laughs> It's terrific. This was Kojo's old bed and we could not donate it. We didn't want to throw it away. So the, the best thing to do was to repurpose it, to upcycle it into this garden bench, right? It's like this yeah. potting bench. We can like plant flowers here and do all kinds of cool things. So I love it. What do you think? Me too. You love it too? Awesome. So what should people do if they like this video? They should what? Thumbs up. Thumbs up and they should subscribe because we do projects like this all the time and we will see you next video and you can find me at, what's my blog name? Thriftdiving.com. Thriftdiving.com. We'll see you next video. Goodbye. Bye. Good job. Ooh.